This is Parkhurst Brogue Capto Service Boot, the Delaware. In this waxy commander, it pervades a rugged excellence, plus fits like soft luxury. How are you going? Welcome back to my channel, Bootlosophy, and my name is Tech. I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands I work on, the Wajik people. In this video today, I'm going to dive into one of Parkhurst's uh, latter half of 2024 releases, this Delaware model in Prairie Waxy Commander. Because of the construction, including this uh, split reverse welt and commando lugged sole, uh, on top of the shapely 602M last, this boot pervades a rugged excellence. At the same time, the uppers are from Charles F. Stead's fine suede, only it's been made durable in the waxy commander version. Surely a feeling of soft luxury. In terms of design, it's a cap toe, service boot pattern on a low profile lug sole uh, with inboard lugs and a uh, flat block heel. From the top of the heel base to the top of the collar, it's a little less than five inches in height, but colloquially, we'd call this a six inch service boot. It has Parkhurst's familiar single piece backstay uh, and a cap toe, but unlike their Richmond models, uh, this Delaware has broguing on the edge of the toe cap. Again, fine detailing for a rugged boot. The juxtapositions I find quite enthralling. The dull reddish sandy colored wax suede, I, I guess the colors of the prairie, they're very close enough to the Australian desert. They offset the dark antique hardware. Uh, I'm almost waxing poetical. Uh, following those design cues, it's obviously befitting a uh, pair of mid-wash or dark wash denim jeans, like this pair of Flint and Tinders, all American stretch denim jeans in dark wash. Uh, and I put on a simple t-shirt on top with the Flint and Tinder flannel line wax trucker jacket, which I reviewed last year, and you can see it up at the top. I think the brown wax canvas of the jacket creates a good sandwich effect with the reddish brown wax suede on the feet. Alternately, you can just put on a work shirt instead of the t-shirt and pairing the outfit with the Flint and Tinder waxed Hudson jacket for what could pass as an English shooting outfit for a wet outdoor walk. I think you can also get away with wearing it as part of a smart casual outfit, like with a pair of sand colored chinos and a mustard colored crew neck jumper, uh, both from Aussie brand Gazman. And while I'm here, I'd like to remind you uh, to give my channel a boost and click on like and subscribe. And also, if you're thinking of buying boots, I've put some links to the products in the description area down below. Some are affiliate links, but it doesn't cost you a penny more uh, while sending a 5-10% to commission my way to help me defray the costs of you know, buying software and other stuff for the channel. Now, I've reviewed a few Parkhurst boots recently, like the other Delaware in Mariam's uh, Veg 10 horse butt uh, up here. So I'm not going to repeat myself too much about the brand as you can go and watch my other videos. But for those of you who are a bit too lazy, <laughs> then very quickly. Parkers was founded in 2018 by former stock analyst Andrew Savisco. Uh, it's really a, a one-man band. Having struggled through the COVID years of supply chain troubles and closing New York factories, uh, Andrew has now contracted a Spanish factory to make most of his boots. He still finishes them off uh, himself in his warehouse in Buffalo, New York, primarily finishing the heels and the, uh, the edging uh, before packing them out and sending them out. Apart from uh, contracting the factories in Spain uh, and now Portugal as well, Andrew does everything else from website management to packing to marketing and customer service. He's recently been producing more and more makeups uh, out of both the Spanish factory and in the stitch down construction models out of Portugal. He uses the factories that best represent the skills he needs. Uh, you can watch my interview with him up here. Okay, uh, now to construction. This time, because of this remarkable leather, I'm going to break with tradition uh, and start from the top and work my way down. The uppers are from Charles F. Stead, renowned tanner since 1825 from Leeds in England. While more recently they tan exotics like kudu and moose, and they experiment with shrunken suede like Rambler and Mohawk, uh, they made their name from being the world's finest tanner of suede. Now suede is a split leather, meaning that the hide is split between the top 
smooth grain half and sent off to make uh, smooth grain leathers like Chrome Excel, uh, and the bottom half, which is then buffed to produce a soft nap suede. It is, by definition, thinner. Uh, this is less than two mils thick. But, you know, because of the fiber structure underneath and the tanning technique, it is soft but durable. Stead is by far, at least in my opinion, the best tanner of suede. I think most people experienced with footwear and leathers can pretty much shut their eyes and feel different suede pieces and identify which ones are from CF Stead. Their suede naps are finer, softer and smoother. This is a variation on their normal dry suedes. This is called Waxy Commander, a wax suede. Now, Waxy Commander is a wax suede, but not all wax suedes are Waxy Commander. Waxy Commander is trademarked by Charles F. Stead, so only Stead produces Waxy Commander. Other tanneries produce wax suede, but they can't call them Waxy Commander suede. Now you might say, oh well, they were first to market and trademark the name, but they're all the same. Well, yes and no. They were the first to market, but their production of wax suede is different in the former formula and the method. Uh, the first difference is the way they push waxes into the hide during tanning. And the second is the level of harder waxes they are able to coat to the surface. While all wax suedes are water resistant to a great degree, Waxy Commander is almost waterproof. Other tanneries are catching up though, uh, but like Halloween's Chrome Excel, where others try to copy the hot stuffing, while many may copy the technique, none have the formula to make it unique. The next thing you should be aware of is the difference between Waxy Commander and Waxed Flesh. Many mix the two up. I'll tell you what Waxy Commander is, but Waxed Flesh is actually the top half of the split turned inside out so that the rough out nap is showing, and then coating the rough out with a thick, hard wax coat. While Waxy Commander is intended to crack and show the often lighter shades underneath, Wax Flash is so thickly coated that it takes a lot to crack the wax and allow the rough out to gradually show through. They are different in wear characteristic as well. I once saw a pair of uh, casual Waxy Commander boots on eBay because I, I ac accidentally bought two of the same. I put on eBay that they'd only been worn twice for photos and video shoots. One watcher accused me of lying, telling me that they could not possibly have cracked up and shown the nap, the sort of gingery nap, as much in just two wears. He did later, good on him, apologize to me when he understood the different characteristics of Waxy Commander and Wax Flesh, but he's not the only one who hadn't known the difference. Waxy Commander boots are made for a walk in the English countryside. Wax Flesh is made for American logging boots. So that's the uppers, a brilliant, soft, but durable leather that's water resistant and capable of uh, anything other than logging, uh, bush firefighting or construction. In the color of Prairie, the wear is not as dramatic as the snuff or tobacco versions where the wax coating is dark brown over a ginger nap. In the Caswell, you can see the red just popping up when, whenever the wax cracks. In these, the blending of the worn, lighter colored wax and the red brown underneath gives the patina more of a blended, oily, earthy look. The stitching on the uppers is first class. Clean, neat, very consistent with no loose threads at the ends uh, of, of the stitching runs. Uh, it is a double, triple and quadruple stitch where it counts. And the stitching on the finely punched broke toe cap is also very precise. The collar is reinforced uh, as are the lace facings. The edges are naturally cut and not rolled, and the hardware is firm and sturdy, uh, where the backing is washered, uh, cleanly punched with no scratchy me uh, metal edges as you run your fingers along their backs. The tongue, like all Parker's models, is semi-gusseted up to the fourth of five eyelets, helping to keep the tongue from uh, sliding around and also keeping out water and sand, obviously. The boot comes with two pairs of laces, these flat cotton ones and a pair of round cotton laces as well. Moving down inside the boot, the vamp is lined, but the shaft is not. Now that's my perfect pairing for a boot to be worn in either cold or heat. There is a branded leather top heel to arch sock liner, I'm not sure if you can see it, that's very lightly padded under the heel. The insole is veg tanned Benz leather, as is the heel counter, uh, while the toe stiffener is elastic. Now just a note, the toe cap is not a piece 
uh, sewn on top of a full vamp. It's sewn to the end of a shortened vamp piece. Moving further down, the uppers are connected to the sole unit using the Goodyear welded form of construction. Now see my video here about the four main types of construction. In Goodyear welting, the uppers uh, and insole are sewn together to the inside edge of the welt. That's the thin strip of leather that goes around the edge of the boot. The outside edge of the welt is sewn through to the veg tan leather midsole and to the rubber outsole. In this case, uh, the welt is a 360 degree wheeled split reverse welt, left a natural color. It's wheeled or pressed by a serrated wheel to produce this ridged marking effect, uh, originally a sign of handmade boot making to mark where the hand stitch stitching should go. A split reverse welt uh, refers to the way the welt is partly split and the top half of that split is then pushed up against the uppers uh, to provide more water resistance. Goodyear welting is referred to as water resistant because the welt forms a barrier and it's also easily resolable because of the uh, two-way construction, allowing the outsole to be just peeled off and replaced without touching the uppers or the insides. Uh, inside the cavity that's caused by the thick welt going around the whole edge of the boot, Parkas uses a cork filler, which coupled with the leather insole and midsole, gives your feet the chance to sink into the construction and create your own orthopedic insole. The outsole, is Parkhurst's proprietary commando lug sole, referring to that familiar pattern of the radiating lugs and diamond-shaped lugs in the center. The lugs are restricted to about a centimeter to a centimeter and a half inside the edge of the sole, and this gives it actually a, a low profile appearance when viewed from the side. The lugs are hidden and you don't look like you're about to stomp onto D-Day. The heel is uh, three to four layers of veg tanned heel stacks topped by the lugged rubber top lift. The overall construction is appropriately sturdy, rugged, and yet within fine, elegant lines. As for leather care, not much is needed. In my personal opinion, none is required. The Waxy Commander is designed to age gracefully and show a worn patina like a graceful old lady showing her age, but still elegant and graceful. It doesn't need conditioner. The Waxy Commander tan uh, tannage pumps it full of oils anyway, uh, and, and as well as waxes that, uh, unless you go for a swim in the sea and then dry it in front of a roaring cold furnace, it should stay nicely moist for most of its life. You can re-wax it once the surface wax really wears off, but why? That's the patina that it has come to earn. All it really needs, in my opinion, is a light brush to remove dry dust and grit, and I'd use a horsehair brush most of the time, but maybe now and then a, a suede, stiff bristle brush to realign the sh showing nap. I've spoken about Parkhurst fits in all of my Parkhurst videos. Uh, mostly, they don't come in different widths because of their combination 602M last. The last is that foot-shaped mold on which they build the boot design. It's a combination width last, meaning it starts at a very narrow C width in the heel uh, and gradually works out through a narrow waist uh, to an E width at the ball of the foot. The almond toe is rounded and so doesn't really squish. Basically, unless you have a very wide foot, you take a half size down from your Brannock size. Now, taking me as an example, I size eight and a half US in D width on the Brannock device. I wear size eight Parkhursts for a perfect fit. If you have very wide feet, you may have to size up, so it's safest to contact Andrew and ask for his advice. As for comfort, the 602M and his new 618 lasts that he uses for his uh, Portuguese stitch down models, they're the best last for my feet. I find them so comfortable around the foot, and that's coupled with the uh, natural leather cork leather combination under my feet. The rubber outsole on these is quite a hard compound, so initially, it feels like shock absorption is pretty tough, <laughs> but it works better and better as you break the boot in. Breaking in, uh, no more than three or four days for me to remove any initial discomfort, and then I think it gets gradually better and better. I bought these for US $368 uh, in June of 2024. Landed in Australia, including uh, post, duties, and our version of sales tax GST, it was over 500 Aussie dollars. Now, in US dollars in the US, they compare with Grant Stone, 
and some classic heritage boots like Wolverine uh, Thousand Mile boots and Red Wing uh, Iron Rangers, all in the same sort of broad price range. I'm not going to say they're better value than those names. Uh, I really think it's horses for courses. But I do think that the quality compares well. And if, design, if the design of this hits you, which it does me, then they compare very well. They look like Vibergs for the price of a Grant Stone or an Iron Ranger. In Australia, after all the duty and charges, it is a bit of a harder call. But in Australia, you know, RM Williams' lace-up models, they sell for $650 to $700 plus dollars. Any other comparison with high street or shopping center brands, it, forget it, it's a non-starter. There's no other real comparison to the leather all over and stitch construction. But I want to make a further comparison. A US $700 boot, $800 I think nowadays, which sells in Australia, when you can get it, for around $1,300 or $1,400 Aussie dollars, and that's Viberg. I am on record on Instagram, and I'm sure I've mentioned it in one or two Parker's reviews, that if you can't afford Viberg but want that modern service boot look with really funky leathers, Parker's is the brand to look to. Now, that is a bold statement because Viberg's materials, uh, construction, quality control, and really fine finishing is, in my opinion, worth the US $700 but that's twice as much as this pair. Is it worth twice as much as this pair, quality or design-wise? I don't think so, you know. The price to quality ratio is much closer than that, and with Parkhurst's uh, recent and more available releases with really funky veg tans, ramblers, suede, kudu, waxy commanders, and mohawks, I think Andrew's made that ratio gap even closer. In summary, it really is an elegant last shape. Uh, and putting on a rugged looking yet soft suede on top of the all leather construction and sturdy stitching, this really is a combination of ruggedness with elegance and apparently luxury. This is one of Andrew's best yet in my opinion. Only be aware, as a small batch manufacturer, Parker's makeups do come and go. So if your trigger finger is slow at any time, they may not make the same designs for a while. Uh, when you check out their website, for example, right now, this model may not show. It's on there at the moment. Don't fret, though. Sign up to their newsletter, buy another pair, another equally astounding pair, and then wait for the restock on these. And remember, before you go, for right now, click on like and subscribe so that you stay in touch. Until the next time, take care, and I'll see you again soon.